What's good, Josh? Boy Boss back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out ten worst WWE storylines of the last five years. Now WWE has uh, recently found them a gem in the Bloodline storyline. It's been probably one of the best things on television since like 2020. So for the past three years, it has been the best storyline WWE has produced, in my humble opinion, since the Daniel Bryan Yes Movement. There has not been a storyline this damn good for this long in WWE in quite some time. And a lot of times, especially in recent years, we've had some of the worst, some of the most nonsensical, don't make any kind of logic sense. Makes it just, it's just, you're surprised that we're watching it on television and there's been a lot more of those than the, a lot of the good storylines in wwe so we're gonna check out some of the worst it's a lot to choose from but they probably picked the worst of the worst we're gonna check this out by uh what culture uh wrestling appreciate all love support let's get right into this one man. every joyous example of wwe getting things unquestionably right over the last five years there have most definitely been just as many if not more times when vince mcmahon and co got it all wrong and then some so i am gareth from what culture wrestling and here are the 10 worst wwe storylines over the last five years number 10 shane mcmahon best in the world Awful. jumping back to late 2018 that year's crown jewel summed up where the often excruciating product was at perfectly. But it was Shane McMahon who left the sourest taste in the universe's mouths. And if that hilariously foolish decision to have the commissioner of SmackDown win the WWE World Cup wasn't painful enough, Stupid. the eventual heel turn that followed in 2019 managed to also produce a staggering amount of simply dreadful occurrences. The entirely unwanted presence brought the worst out of The Miz, Roman Reigns, and Kevin Owens in the coming months. And fans were forced to sit through that best in the world entrance for a frankly ridiculous amount of time too. There's Go home heat and then they stop clogging up the wrestling show with this overindulgent idiocy heat number yeah. nine retribution are here an invading group of aggressive newcomers is a rather tried and tested concept in the world of sports entertainment but a landscape shifting debut on the same level as a shield or nexus was sadly nowhere to be seen mm -hmm. on the night a certain retribution decided to start vandalizing wwe's performance center back in august 2020 and the entire thing was taken up a few more silly notches when the group were ultimately revealed to be a set of hilariously rebranded, terribly masked one-time NXT faces. Yeah. Slapjack, T-Bar, Mace, Retaliation, and Reckoning didn't exactly dominate the show out of the gates. Not even the reveal of Mustafa Ali acting as the group's unlikely leader could spark any genuine interest in a once-promising angle. By early 2021, the group had already run its course, and WWE mercifully moved on from this misfiring invasion. Number yep. 8, Dean Ambrose Hates Germs. It, it didn't work. It didn't work at all. It sound interesting. It just was not executed uh, at all in uh, in a way where it, it just people would care or it made sense. So. In Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose, the pair's built-in shield history and the fact the latter had suddenly decided to stab his former brother in the back on the night of Roman Reigns' heartbreaking leukemia announcement armed WWE with a tale capable of producing one of the most personal and heated rivalries of modern times. But in typical Vinnie Mac fashion, the boss traded the emotional for the ridiculous and Ambrose soon found himself getting vaccinated in the ass and sporting a gas mask in his bids to keep himself from catching the illnesses found in the WWE universe. However, it was the fact so that we tried to infuse Reigns' real-life battle with cancer into the floundering program, with Ambrose claiming that his one-time brother now had to answer to the man upstairs for his shield crimes. That really... That was, yeah, that was just like, bro, what are y'all doing, bro? This is... This dude's really dealing with some stuff, and you want to put this in a story? Now, uh, you can say, well, you know, it's happened in the past with Madden and Lita and Edge. Yeah, I get that. But this is life and death we're talking about here. It's, it's different from a relationship. Yes, it's personal. But this is like, it's all about having some type of class here. It's like, bro, he's, he's dealing with it. People have dealt with this, this particular uh, form of cancer. Like, what are we doing here? What just, what are we doing here? He's dealing, he's... Now he has to suffer and face judgment for his crimes in the shield in a scripted show. Okay. 
cemented this one as a truly appalling on-screen tale. Number seven, Jeff Hardy and Sheamus tackle addiction. <laughs> oh, WWE yeah. haven't exactly got the best track record when it comes to the handling of rather sensitive subjects. So when it became clear that the company were deciding to pull Jeff Hardy's very real personal struggles with addiction into his feud with Sheamus, many understandably braced themselves for an uncomfortable few weeks of TV. On the back of Jeff being accused of hitting Elias with his car whilst under the influence, it was soon revealed that the Celtic warrior had actually set up the charismatic enigma. And in order to guarantee a match between the rivals at Backlash, Hardy was forced to take a urine test in the yep. middle of the ring, as you do. Then, after labeling Hardy as a junkie and earning a face full of piss for his troubles, Sheamus ultimately picked up the win at the PLE before the two brawled it out in a bar fight. Yep. But despite Hardy claiming that he was actually pretty happy with the storyline, most at home would have preferred not to have had his ongoing struggles exploited for the sake of adding some cheap drama to the disturbing on-screen tale. <laughs> Number six, Alexa Bliss gets spooky. Alexa Bliss is oh, corrupting at the hands oh. of Bray Wyatt's fiendish alter ego, oh, provided brother. the Thunderdome era with some of its darkest days, and not in the way WWE were likely aiming for. The one-time goddess soon morphed into something of a creepy supernatural schoolgirl who possessed the power to transform a WWE ring <laughs> into a playground and launch fireballs out of her fingerless gloves. Bliss continued yeah. to quote-unquote torment the roster with her stuffed doll by the name of Lily, who bizarrely managed to turn former MMA fighter Shayna Baszler into a sniveling wreck. And if you needed an indication as to what the live reaction would have been to these anything but terrifying or tense occurrences. Then look no further than the sea of indifference that met Bliss's most recent Uncle Howdy spooky interactions towards the back end of 2022 and start of 2023. Number five, The Fiend and Hey, what about when she, oh, I was, once she started controlling wrestlers with her mind powers, I, I, I was done, bro. I was just fucking, Get it off my screen. She literally took the fiend's gimmick, bro. She took his whole gimmick. Took his whole drip. And it just got stupider. And I'm just like, get it off my screen. Randy Orton get fiery and gooey. There were a few campy highlights, admittedly, but those fond muscle man memories were entirely overshadowed by Wyatt's eventual reigniting of his longtime rivalry with Randy Orton. Trying to really double down on the concept of The Fiend being WWE's own unbeatable horror movie monster, the pair's fiery back and forth ultimately led to Wyatt being literally burned alive yeah. for the TLC Firefly Inferno win. But because you can never truly keep a good children's TV show host alter ego down, the outrageousness reached new unprecedented unprecedented levels, with an utterly scorched fiend returning from the ashes to help Bliss uncomfortably straddle Orton at Fastlane 2020. <laughs> I remember that. I think uh, Randy Orton's wife did not appreciate the straddle. I know some of you guys would have, but I don't think his wife was uh, very appreciative of the straddle <laughs> from a demonic <laughs> Alexa Bliss in a a burnt up fiend. <laughs> okay. Anyone? And the payoff to all this fire and black goo madness? A veteran Orton once again getting the better of his one-time Wyatt family teammates on the grandest stage. At yep. least it didn't go down inside of a bright red cage, though, yeah? Number four, Seth Rollins <laughs> gets ruined by the fiend. Despite the buzz surrounding this fearsome new creature, Wyatt's obliterating of legends and Finn Balor hinted at a rather disastrous fate for whichever poor soul ended up in a legitimate feud with him first. Mm -hmm. Then Universal Champion Seth Rollins, who just about found his feet as a top babyface after a bumpy initial spell with the belt, drew the short straw in the end. And his red light filtered Hell in a Cell war with Wyatt that ended in a controversial and nonsensical referee stoppage ultimately did neither man any real favours. But at least the hottest toy in town managed to get his hands on the soon-to-be blue belt in their follow-up Saudi Falls Count Anywhere fight. And detrimental mm -hmm. feud as a whole resulted in a destroyed Beast Slayer character being well and truly dragged to hell though, with Rollins sitting as the first of many forced into a change on the back of an unwelcome Wyatt rivalry. Number three, the Demon King he still shouldn't have he shouldn't have went for the title his character didn't need the title no because you're at this point you're building him up as this unstoppable force so putting him in a title match he has to win it or you've wasted everybody's time you book they booked themselves in a corner that's why i was like he shouldn't have went for the title so soon he should have been if anything he should have been going for the people that have wronged him in the past. Attacking people that have wronged him. He felt like that has wronged him in the past. 
that could have been just his story arc. His story arc. Not winning the title because that character doesn't need that title. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can do it at a later point, but he needs to, he should have been going for people that he felt like has screwed him over in the past in that form and just taking them out one by one. I would have preferred that than what we got with him and Seth Rollins. Returns to tumble at extreme rules. Rather than learning from those prior supernatural fumbles though, the boss thought it better to book himself into the pointless corner of having Finn Balor's genuinely intriguing comeback play out opposite an all-conquering Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. And the results were about as deflating as you could possibly imagine. Nobody legitimately thought the first ever Universal Champion would be able to walk out of extreme rules with the belt he never lost. Also, yeah. by the time Balor did finally go full Demon King, the fact Brock Lesnar had already been teed up as Reigns' next real superstar our challenger mm -hmm. made the sight of the painted being tumbling off a snap top rope in the pair's eventual PLE title match feel about as disheartening as it was inevitable. What a waste, eh? <laughs> Looked up to the heavens above. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number two, the Miz and Dexter Loomis's never-ending story. Mm -hmm. For a time, it did actually seem as though WWE were attempting to have a bit of fun with the arrival of longtime staring artist Dexter Loomis when he made his return to the company in August. However, on the back of a few interesting Raw appearances consisting of him initially being arrested in the crowd and subsequently kidnapping the Miz, things soon started to go a bit south, and they proceeded to do so for a whopping four months. The mystery as to why Loomis had chosen to target Miz in the first place became less interesting by the yeah. way. Then, when it was finally revealed that Loomis had bafflingly actually been originally hired by the A-lister to stalk him as a way of getting more eyes on the Grand Slam champion, instead of wrapping up the trundling story, the pair went on to continue their battle for a few more painful weeks. And even the apparent <laughs> payoff of Loomis earning himself a WWE contract and the stalking money he was owed was soiled by Miz ultimately winning the latter back in an unwanted ladder match. Awesome, this was <laughs> nuts. Number one, the big dog food feud oh, with Baron Corbin. Man. The program that brought with it the last time the tribal chief had his shoulders pinned to the mat for the one, two, three, this may be. But it was also the long running tale that saw more canine obsessed antics than any long suffering WWE fan ever thought possible. Who can ever dog forget? Mascots with additional howling pooch tron entrances and not one, but two dog food scenarios involving both performers being drenched in the stuff acted as the obvious lowlights. The two would battle it out on PLE on three separate occasions. Relentlessly boring, uninspired segments and consistently underwhelming in-ring showings, absolutely nobody involved in the war between Corbin and his goons and a pre-head-of-the-table bloodline <laughs> actually benefited from this water-treading nonsense in the slightest. But at least Corbin got a stat out of it that he's still clinging on to for dear life to this day, eh? And that's yep. our list, nor any other WWE storylines of the last- He still has that that, that moniker, I am the last person that pinned Roman Reigns. No, <laughs> to the mat, one, two, three. No one else has. So he can he can say that. <laughs> but yeah, man, there has been so, and I'm sure there's plenty more stories they could, storylines they could put on here that are just awful. So I want to get y'all opinion. Comment down below. Let me know what's the worst wwe storyline you can think of that you've you remember it don't have to you know it don't have to be anything recent or it can be something recent doesn't matter just tell me what's the worst wwe storyline you can remember you know and uh if it wasn't on this list and let's have a discussion and go down memory lane unfortunately for these horrible storylines because trust and believe wwe has put on some just awful awful storylines i remember the one with bobby lashley and his family i believe his sisters or some shit or it was just just weird creepy it was i didn't like it <laughs> i thought it was stupid so comment down below let me know some other horrible storylines wwe has put on that just made you just want to turn off the tv but i appreciate all love and support road to 150k and i am still getting the speed of youtube wrestling champ of the world Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.